So this stove is what you would call a downdraft masonry heater or a, uh, a capel often or um, also known as just a, a standard kind of masonry heater as well. Uh, this is a, uh, a stove that uh, it's actually a, a kit that uh, I purchased from, uh, if you live in Alberta, the, the, the seller is, is uh, uh, the website's called nogasbill.com. Uh, however, if you are uh, anywhere else in the world, uh, you can look them up as uh, crossfirefireplaces.com. And uh, it's, it's the same, uh, uh, the same place, but the, in, in Alberta, the, uh, the, the place to get them is, is no gas bill. So the, uh, the basic principles behind you know, any masonry heater is uh, uh, trying to get the, uh, uh, have, a, have a large fire for a short duration of time, and then use a lot of thermal mass to store the, the heat from that and then slowly release it over a long period of time. So it, it, this particular stove here, obviously this is the, uh, the fireplace here, and uh, it's still, there's just heat pouring out of there from the, the fire that I had this morning. And so the, the, the fire that you have inside this firebox here, the, the, the flames go up uh, and they hit kind of a, 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 co a concrete surface here, and then they go sideways, and then they go down on both sides. There's, a, there's an air channel underneath here, and then they both meet up at this point here, and then they go up and leave the building th uh, through the, uh, the flue. And so th there's a lot of different configurations, a lot of different designs for these different kinds of masonry heaters. There's other masonry heaters where, you know, the fireplace is down low and the flue gas is just crisscross going back and forth in, in you know, different convoluted uh, channels. And then they leave out the top of the stove. Uh, uh, that's kind of your, your standard kind of ru uh, Russian oven uh, is, um, is, is how, how those guys are built. But the, the problem with, with those kind of masonry heaters where the, the flue gas is crisscross uh, back and forth going up is that is that um, the fire uh, you know as it, as it's burning up it's carrying ash in it and, and different kind of non combusted materials and so uh, if if you have the the flue gas is going back and forth as it's leaving the, there's possibility for any uncombusted materials or ash to settle out uh, as it's going back and forth and so if you have that crisscrossing back and forth, you need to have a, what's known as a clean out, which uh, allows you to get access to that, um, that passageway through the, the masonry so that over time they'll actually build up and it could plug itself off. Versus with these downdraft masonry heaters, because the, the flue gases go straight up, over, and then down, the only, like, if, if anything drops out here, it falls back into the firebox. And if anything drops out over here, it falls down and it can be accessed via a clean, one clean out at the base here. Then I can give access to the whole bottom side there as opposed to having to have, you know, five or six clean outs all the way up the stove. So it's, it's a, uh, that makes it, you know, really simple for maintenance. Although the, the you know, the, the guy that I bought this stove from, uh, I believe he said he's had over 10,000 fires in his fireplace, which is like, I was like, 15 years or something worth of burning, 10 or 15 years of the fires, and he's only had to clean uh, his stove out once. So part of that is just how efficiently the stove runs. But uh, uh, regardless, the, you know, if the, the other reason why you'd wanna have a downdraft masonry heater versus just kind of a, a you know, a, a, what you call it, like a serpentine style masonry heater where it's just going through is that uh, hot air rises, cold air sinks. And so, it, you know, obviously the, there's a huge amount of heat in this fireplace, it's rising up. But then in order for it to go down, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive, however, it's being pulled by kind of the, the, um, the, the chimney draft. And so uh, the, the, the idea, one of the principles behind these downdraft stoves is that as the, as the hot air has to go down, 
it, it's kind of more inclined to give off of its heat because it, it, it has to actually lose heat to, to go down is, is one of the thoughts. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's why I particularly like these uh, downdraft masonry heaters. And so the, the, the other masonry heater we have in the farm, uh, a Tula Kiwi, which is a very similar design to this, uh, is also a downdraft masonry heater. And in my opinion, they're, um, they're the way to go for, for these masonry heaters. Although I've never used one of the, the crosscraft um, things, but with, with all the cleanouts there, it, it seems like it would be um, a real problem. They also would be quite complicated to, to build all those different different channels through through the stove there. One of the things that I particularly like about this uh, downdraft masonry stove is that uh, it, it it comes with a with a kit. So uh, I was able to to purchase this, and uh, it came shipped up from Ontario, Canada, uh, just on a on a pallet, and we were able to you know, unload it, bring it right into our garage here, set it down, and uh, I was able to you know, help assemble it, the the core. But I actually did all of the the veneer on this stove myself. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever laid uh, bricks before. Uh, I did do tiling for years, and so I had I had you know all the tools. I had the tile saws and the uh, you know the mud mixers and the trowels and stuff like that. And just you know, there's uh, I, I, I after I did it for a bit, I realized that that laying bricks is just like three dimensional tile setting. Uh, you know, tiles you're just laying them on the floor. It's it's kind of uh, you know, one dimensional versus this is is you're going up and 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 if, if you've ever done tiling in a shower or something or up a wall, that's kind of like two dimensional. Uh, and then this would be three dimensional, actually building uh, structure. And so it, it, there really wasn't, uh, I didn't have any issues at all um, teaching myself just from watching a few YouTube videos about how to get the mud to the right consistency. So that was really nice because I, I really enjoy doing you know, hands-on projects like this. And it, uh, I think it looks uh, really great. And so, um, you know, that was a huge bonus for me is, is, is you know, being able to, to do the majority of it myself. And actually, seeing how easy it was to assemble the kit, uh, like the core of, the, of the, the stove itself, which was made out of, out of refractory cement, uh, which is just you know, regular concrete that has um, uh, a refractory clay just mixed into it. At least that's, the, I'm sure they've, maybe there's some other stuff to it, but from what I've, I've read online, that's the, the majority of it is just using small aggregates and having a fire clay or a refractory clay that can handle higher temperatures um, and so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, the fact that it came as a kit and that you can put whatever veneer you want on it. So this could be field stone. This could be, uh, I've seen, you know, there's, there's pictures online of, of folks using a, um, kind of like a, a clay or like an adobe finish. So that it looks kind of like, you know, a, a traditional kind of, you know, Mexican style stove. Uh, but they're, they're very, very, uh, flexible and, uh, they're also very, like very simple. Uh, the Tula Kiwi that uh, my parents have in their house, it would be, that stove was about $25,000 versus this stove would be, you know, ten dollars to $15,000 depending how much of the work you did yourself. You know, $15,000 being you just hired it all out and $10,000 meaning you did kind of everything for yourself and, uh, and you didn't, uh, you didn't have to get anybody else involved. Like, so basically the, the core of itself which came with all the hardware and everything was about 10,000 bucks uh, delivered. So it was pretty reasonable given the, the, the value that you can get out of it. And people think, oh my God, you can buy you know, a, 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 a steel box stove for a few thousand bucks. Why would you ever want to get one of these masonry heaters? And after you've lived with the masonry heater, uh, you'll understand, otherwise it's kind of hard to explain. But so, some of the, the major uh, pros are the fact that there's no fire burning in this right now and yet it's there's still heat pouring out, out of it you know this the room that i'm standing in right now is is 20 degrees celsius even though it's you know minus 15 degrees celsius outside and i haven't had a fire for three hours so you know if, if you want to have have uh, a fire fireplace to be your primary heat source the you're kind of a slave to the stove because you know every couple hours you got to put wood in it to keep it going going and 
you know, the, there's, there's a lot of kind of boom and bust cycles with the, you know, it's, it's kind of either too hot or it's too cold. I, I've always found with, with our, our steel box stoves, because in, in our old houses, and I used to have in this shop here, uh, a steel box stove that was running off the same chimney before, uh, that with, with those steel box stoves, they're, they're really irregular, they require a lot of babysitting, and, uh, and you can't really ever go away unless you have a, 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 another backup heating system for more than a few hours because you're, the, the building loses its heat so, so fast versus this guy. It works really well with my kind of schedule on the farm being that, you know, I have to be home every night to lock up my dairy cows and have to be home every morning to milk my dairy cows with the exception when I go away for, you know, on a consulting trip or something and that way my, you know, my parents are still doing it or whoever's looking after the house. But that means that for you know, a 10 hour window in the middle of the day, I can do whatever I want. I can leave the farm, I can go to town, I can, I can be you know, teaching uh, uh, upstairs. I don't have to think about it. Versus before, it was like every, I literally had to set my, a timer on my phone. It was like every hour and a half, two hours, that's kind of like the op to keep the fire burning optimally versus, versus if, if, you, if you let it go down too far and you get just coals, uh, that are that aren't quite as hot. You know, there's a lot of smoke, and, and you gotta babysit it and make sure that it, because uh, you can't have the damper all the way down. It's just it's really dinky type stuff, and and I kind of enjoy that. But after a few years of doing that, and just how busy I am, it, it just it didn't make sense. And my parents had a masonry stove in their house, and it was like one fire in the morning, one fire at night in really cold weather. Otherwise, just one fire a day, mm. and. <laughs> My dog is looking for some attention. Um, the, the you know one to two fires a day, and you're done. And the rest of the day you can do whatever you want. So it fits really well with our schedule because we're home every night anyways. And uh, and so that's that's the reason why you'd want to spend this kind of money. Uh, but the there's other uh, be benefits for it too. Is that they are uh, you know really the, like I said they don't have that that boom and bust heat cycle with with this stove. Because it weighs you know, five to six thousand pounds, uh, it, it it really buffers that heat. The um, you know like the the temperature of this building. It, it's it is a shop, and so it's not well insulated. There's a you know a big overhead door on the the one end. It's like a sixteen foot overhead door, ten feet tall. It's not that's you know only R four or five, but in a in a regular house uh, like like my folks have, where they've actually got a straw bale house, so it's R forty. In their walls, uh, the uh, the 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 temperature doesn't vary by more than like half a degree Celsius or one degree. It's it's like it's so stable. Versus if you've if you've ever lived in a house with a wood stove, it's that you can go 10, 50, 10 degrees up or down. <laughs> you know, it's like thirty degrees Celsius down to uh, you know fifteen degrees Celsius or more in just a few minutes. And you open you open the window and because it gets too hot and and Anyways, if, if you've ever had a stove, you know what I'm talking about. But with these guys, it just, the thermal mass acts like a, a flywheel that kind of buffers out any of those, those high lows. And it's also interesting is like, like the colder the room is, the more heat comes out versus the warmer the room is, the, the slower the heat comes out of the stove. So it, it, it has its own buffering mechanism, even though there's no, no fire in there. So like, like I can only hold my hand onto the stove for like a few seconds before it gets too too hot for me to hold and um, which is like it's just the right if you've got like a shirt or something uh, the, then it's just the perfect temperature if, if it's bare skin it's it's a bit too hot but I can put my back against here for hours and it is <laughs> the ability to, to lean up against these stoves on a when it's really cold outside you're just coming from outside is another really amazing feature of these stoves because this building was was not designed around this wood stove, I, I don't have access to the back side, which would be the best place, like my folks do on their Tula Kiwi. They've got a beautiful little bench right by their stove. It's like it's the favorite place in the house, and so I, that's one of the downsides. Is I wished I would have been able to, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, however, uh, there is like a little stool that I've got kind of around the corner that uh, I can come down and, and lean up against uh, you know, a, a small portion, but the back side is the largest heating surface on the stove. And so it still heats the room, but it doesn't have that ability to lean up against. Mm -hmm.